Cool, what's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com, continuing our series on Blender modifiers by talking about the cast modifier. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so basically what this tool does is it shifts the shape of a mesh um, or a curve or other object inside of Blender towards becoming a sphere, a cylinder, or a cuboid. It's kind of an odd little modifier, but I, I think it kind of aligns with some tools that are in some other software. But basically what it does is it takes your object and it makes it closer to a sphere, a cylinder, or a cuboid. So let's say we have this cube right here. Notice that I've tabbed into edit mode and subdivided it a couple times, so there's some geometric detail. But if you take this modifier and you add it to this cube, Notice what it's gonna do is it's gonna take your mesh and it's going to start shifting it towards the shape that you select right here. So notice how if you get a factor beyond one, um, you start getting some kind of odd results in here. So notice how if I bring this up to like four, then it starts taking your individual faces and moving them into spheres. So usually if you wanna get something to go like completely to a sphere, for example, you could just go to a factor of one. Notice how that takes that cube and it basically makes it a, um, it basically makes it a sphere. And so notice how there's also a drop down here where you can select if you want this to become a cylinder or if you want this to become a cuboid. So in this case, if we were to take a cylinder, right, and put it to like 0.5, then it's gonna look something like this. So it's basically taking those objects and moving them to being those shapes. So let's say, for example, that we were to take this Suzanne right here. And I'm gonna move it over a little bit. And let's say that we wanted to take this object and we'll go ahead and I'll add a new cast modifier to this. But notice how if I take these values, right? So if I put a value of zero, it's just gonna, just gonna stay as is, but if I bump this factor up to one, notice how my Suzanne is a lot more like a sphere, right? So it basically takes all the vertices that are in here and makes them as close to a sphere as possible. Now notice how on that back side there's a lot less geometry, so the sphere shape is a lot less detailed. You could fix that, or at least make it better by going in and adding a subdivision surface modifier before hand like this. So notice what that does is that gives us that additional geometry. The more geometry that you have in here, the more closely it can take this object and align it with a sphere. So there are some interesting things you could do with this. So let's say for example that we wanted to keyframe this. We could come in here and we could set this to zero to start off and we'll go ahead and we'll keyframe this value and then let's say maybe like 30 frames in right here, we'll set this factor to one like this, and then we'll go ahead and keyframe this right here. Well then, if you were to export this to an animation or something like that, you would have a video where your object transitions into a sphere like this. And so I suppose this is kind of an interesting function if you do want to take those objects and kind of animate that transition. Um, another thing you could do if you wanted to is you could also take this back to a zero and have it be like a looping animation. So if you wanted to, you could just take this and you could just have a transition back and forth over and over again or something like that. So there are some things you can do with that. And so you may have noticed in addition um, that there are functions inside the cast modifier um, in order to adjust this based on like a vertex group or something like that. And so notice how you can use the functions down below like the size to adjust the size of that result right here. In addition, down below, there's also some options for doing this with like vertex groups. So let's say for example, that we were to take this cylinder. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a subdivision surface modifier above it like this. And we'll add a subdivision or two like this. But let's say you only wanted to limit this to part of this object. Well, what you could do is you could tab into this object and we'll go to a straight on view real quick, but we're gonna switch this to wireframe mode. And let's say that we only wanted this to affect the middle of this object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these vertices, I'm gonna add them to a vertex group right here, and I'm gonna give them a weight of one. So I'm just gonna click on the sign and um, I've created a vertex group called inflate that I've assigned these to. Well, now if we go back into edit mode and we take a look at this modifier and we can go back to material preview mode, but notice how you can use this vertex group and place the inflate function in here. Well, when you do that, notice how now only those objects that have a weight applied to them are getting this surface associated with it, right? So now let's say that you wanted these to go to like cuboids or something like that. Um, and we were to set our factor to one, notice how it's taking the ends and trying to put them as a cuboid. 
and um, it's leaving the middle part alone right here. And you can kind of adjust that effect a little bit using these settings. Um, they do get a little bit weird in here when you do that though. All right, and then notice there's also an option here to have an object effect um, where this effect occurs. So let's say for example, that we were to do a shift A, we were to add a UV sphere over here. So I'm just gonna move this over and we'll move it up a little bit. So now what I wanna do is we'll go ahead and leave this as a sphere for right now. I'm gonna go ahead and set my factor to one like this. And what I wanna do is I want to select this object as the object that's going to affect that. Well, notice how when I do that, now that effect is occurring based on the location of that sphere inside of the 3D space like this. So you can use an external object to affect this result like this, which there are some interesting things that this does. All right, and so what we're gonna do now is notice how there's a function in here for radius. So if we set this so that our radius is above zero, notice how this effect goes away. Well, what the radius is going to do is that's going to affect how far away from the center of this object it's going to deform these items. Well, right now, right, um, if I was to bump this up, notice how we start getting a little deformation in here like this. So you can use that radius in order to set how far away that deformation is gonna happen. And notice how again, that this is basically creating a recess inside of the surface right here. And so one thing we might wanna do is we might wanna bump this up a little bit from a detail standpoint. So I'm gonna move my subdivision surface up here and notice how when I do that and I add more detail, now I get a more deformed like hole in the surface, right? So notice how you can use this in order to create that kind of like drop in the surface right here. And then you can kind of play around with your radius. So if you wanted this to just be around where this object is like this, notice how you can bump that down. And then I can move this up and down in order to use this sphere in order to create a result where um, I'm actually bending this around the object in Blender. So leave a comment below. Let me know if you've used this for anything in the past. I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to some other modifier tutorials on this page as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.